Hi, hi, Steve. Uh, to call me at nine one seven two two five four zero four five. I'm not the number for the Zoom. If you want to join, uh, please call me at nine one seven two two five four zero four five. Rabbi Jacob. Hey, shalom. Hey, shalom. Hey, when are you when are you gonna be coming back, you think? You uh, tomorrow. Planning on tomorrow. Okay, the code's changed, so I'll text you the code, okay, to get in. Um tomorrow, you think, huh? Uh,
mais Ok, Shabbat Shalom. Let's begin. We're going to have an echo. Ooh. We're going to have an echo. Bad. So we can't all sit in the same room. Well, you got to turn off your mics, everybody else, except for... It's okay. We took care of it. All right. So let's do some tefillah first, some worship. Okay, so we do the bracha of, let's see, I gotta reorient this. Okay, Baruch Atah the night. Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher ki bishana v'mitzvotah v'tzivan Allah asof ki divrei v'tzorah. Blessed be O Lord, our God, who is the king of the universe, who has sanctified us in his commandments and commanded us to, to involve ourselves with the words of this teaching, the words of this Torah. Baharudna Adonai Eloheinu, es divrei Torah techa v'kinu, and let the words, may they have grace and be sweet from the Lord our God. His words of his Torah, let them be sweet in our mouths. Okay, we begin with Psalm 148, the Tehillim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Tadonai, min hashamayim. Praise be the Lord from the heavens. Bahamayim, uh, halalu min hashamayim, let it be praised in the heights. Halalu kal malachav, halalu kal Praise him, all you angels. Praise him, all you hosts. Halalu shemesh re'erach, praise him. Praise ye him, the sun and the moon. Halalu kal kofriyo, praise him, all you stars of light. Hallelujah, Shameha Shamayim, praise him, the heavens, uh, and the heavens above the heavens. Vamayim and the waters, Hashemayel Hashemayim, that are above the heavens. Hallelujah, Shem Adonai, let them praise the name of the Lord. Kihut Sibavani Brau, for he commanded and they were created. Vayami Dem Laad Laolam, for he hath established them forever and ever. Chak Natan, he has made them a decree, Velo Yavor, and they will not be moved. Hallelujah, Sadonai Mina Aretz. Let us praise the Lord from the earth. Taninim, and even the sea monsters, Vachal Talmud, and all that are in the depths. Eishu Barag, even the fire and the hail, Shaleg Vikitor, the snow. And the vapor, Ruach Sahara, the stormy wind, Osad Devaro, which fulfills his very words, Eharim, the mountains, Vachol Gavaod, and all the peaks and the hills, Eitzbari, all the trees of, that have fruit, Vachol Arazim, and all the cedars, Achaya Vachol Behema, all the beasts and all the cattle. Whoops, what happened here? Oh my, oh my, my. Oh boy. Let's see if I can get that back. Oh boy. Let's see if I can do it. Okay. Um, I've been having trouble with this lately. I apologize, everyone. Tani v'chol t'almos, eshu barak shalut kitor, ruach sa'ara, sa'dvaro, naharim v'chol gavot, esperi v'chol arazim, achai v'chol behima, all 
We're going to have to do without the Hebrew. I know it by heart. All the kings, and all the peoples, the princes, and all the judges of the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll have to fix that later. Okay. We continue with Psalm 149. Hallelujah. Shir Ladunai Shir Chadash. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Tilasob Bakal Chasidim. Let his praise be in the assembly of the Chasidim, the saints. Yismach Yisrael Beosav, Benet Sion Yagilu Bemalkam. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise unto him with a timbrel in the heart. For the Lord takes pleasure and wants his people. And he glorifies the humble, be Yeshua, with salvation, with Yeshua. Ya'alzu chasidim bechavod, let the saints exult in glory and honor. Yeranenu al mishkavotam, let them sing for joy. Um, and let them shout for joy on mishkavotam, on where they rest. Romamot el pigronam, let the high praises of God be in their mouths. And uh, Bigronam is actually in their throats. Becher of Pipiot Beadam, a two edged sword in their hands. La Asot Nekama Bagoyim, to execute judgment upon the nations, Tochechot, and chastisements, follow me upon the peoples. Ler so Malkem Bizikim, to bind their, ch their kings uh, with chains, Benichbedehem, and their no nobility. Bechavle Barzel with fetters of iron, La Asot Baham Mishpat Katu, in order to execute upon them, to do upon them the justice, the judgment that is written. Hadar Hu, He is the glory, Lachal Chasida, for all the saints. Hallelujah. Right, so the glory of God will be most manifest when his judgments. Uh, are become real and become manifest and clear. Okay, we continue uh, with uh, Psalm 150. Hallelujah, hallelujah, El Bikacho, praise God in his sanctuary. Hallelujah, Rikiozo, praise him in the firmament of his power. Hallelujah, Big Tav. Praise him with his mighty acts. Hallelujah, Karov Gadlo. Praise him according to his abundant greatness. Hallelujah, Berkia Beteka Shofar. Praise him with the blast of the Shofar. Hallelujah, Benel Vichino. Praise him with the sultry, with the stringed instrument and Vichino and the harp. Hallelujah, Betofu Maho. Praise him with the timbrel and with the dance. Hallelujah, Beminim Vilgao. Praise him with the string instruments. And with the pipe. Hallelujah, but says to Shama, praise him with the loud sounding cymbals. Hallelujah, but says to praise him with the clanging cymbals. Call Hana Shama to Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Call Hana Shama to Hallelujah. Let all things praise him. Anything that has that has a soul, everything that lives, let it praise. Let it praise him. Hallelujah. So we have to praise God all the time, but not only are we to praise God all the time, but all creation is to praise God all the time. Okay, we continue. Ashrei Yoshwe Psalm 145. This is one of the great psalms. It is um, known. Uh, the greatness of the psalm is known because it has all the letters of the Hebrew alphabet embedded in the psalm except for one letter. Uh, a psalm and a praise of David. Let 
I will extol thee, and I will praise thee, my God and my King. Khan, I will bless thy name, Shinta Lo Longbahad, forever and ever. Bakul Yom Avarchaka, every day will I bless you. Bahalala Shimcha, and I'll praise thy name, Lo Longbahad, forever and ever. Gadol Adonai Mulal Me'od, great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. Ligdlato and his greatness, in Khaker, there has no no limit. Door to door, Yeshabah my Secha. From one generation, from generation to generation, shall they praise thy works. Ugvoro Tacha and your mighty acts, Yagidu, will they speak. Adar Kavoto Dacha, the glorious splendor of thy majesty, the divine Iflotacha and thy wondrous works, Asicha, will I, will I speak about. And men so speak greatly of thy tremendous acts. And I will tell of all thy greatness. I shall utter the fame of thy great goodness. And thy righteousness, your Anenu, will be sing. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Slow to anger, Ubdal said, and great, great, and have great mercy. Tovad and I like call, the Lord is good to all. Barachamav and his, uh, his compassion, his tender mercies, I'll call myself or over all his creation. Yo ducha Adonai, call myself, or all thy works shall praise thee, O, o Lord. Lechasidacha, your anino, and thy saints shall bless thee. Okay, we continue with uh, verse uh, 11. Kavod malchutcha yomeru. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom, ugvaratcha yabeiru, and of thy might uh, will they, will they uh, speak, converse. Lahodia livnei adam gavurotav. In order to make known to the sons of man his might, Uchvod and his glory, Hadar Malchuto and the majesty of his kingdom. Malchutcha Malchutka Olamim. Thy kingdom is a kingdom for all eternity. O Memshaltacha and thy sovereignty and dominion. Bachol is for Dor Vador from one generation to another for it, forever. So Mecha Adonai Lacholha no Flim. The Lord upholdeth all who fall. And raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait for you. And you give them their food in due season. The Lord is righteous, perfectly righteous in all his ways. That's a, a profoundly humbling idea that anything that happens to us is um, is the perfect justice of God. This is something hard for most people to accept. That God is perfectly righteous. Yes, Satan comes and attacks, but at the end of the day, Satan can only do what God permits, as mm -hmm. we see in Job. Yep. So uh, if things are happening to us, they are righteous, even though they can be painful. And this is something uh, that is there's a big teaching on that can really profoundly meditate on this verse over here. This is when the rubber meets the road. This verse is the rubber meets the road. Even the demons believe in God. Even the demons believe in Yeshua. So what? The difference is they rebel. And are angry against God's righteousness. Uh, dare say many people are no different. So we cannot be different. We have to be different than that. We cannot be to have the same attitude, right? Um, this is why the saints are humble. Karov Adonai Lachol Karav. The Lord is close to all who call upon Him, but uh, but the 
attaches l'chol asher yukaru v'amas to all that call upon him v'amas in truth. But son yireav yaseh, he'll fulfill the desires of those that fear him. V'et shabbatam, and he will also hear their cry, v'yoshiyem, and will save them. Shomer adonai is kol ha'avav, the Lord guards, Shomer is to guard, et kol ha'avav, all those that love him, v'et kol rishayim, but all the wicked, yashmid, he destroys. Yes, God destroys the wicked. Tilat adonai yedavar ki, my mouth shall speak, uh, the praise of the Lord it should always be on my mouth. Let the praises of God be always the speak uh, the speech of our mouth. In other words, God gave us a mouth, and its primary function is to praise Him. And its highest function is to do that. If we use it for any other purpose, we're misusing God's gift. Let all flesh bless His name. Shem Katsho, his holy name, let us praise his glorious name, for now and for eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us praise God's name forever and ever. Amen. Okay, so that is, um, uh, so that's a, uh, that's a little bit on the worship. Uh, today, we're going to do a, Teaching, of course, a little bit on the power shot, just very, very little. And then Jonathan is going to do a uh, teaching for us uh, this Shabbat Kodesh power shot. Well, uh, by um, And uh, so let's see uh, what we got here. All right, power shot by Yikra. By Yikra begins a new book. It's called, in Hebrew, it's called by Yikra, which literally means to be called. Now, in the Greek, it was translated as Leviticus because much of the uh, Sefer, much of the uh, this holy book concerns itself with what the Levitical priests had to do. But that's a, it's really a, um, an incorrect translation of the book. Um, the book, if the book takes its name from the first word uh, of the book, we would call it Vayikra. And Vayikra means to be called. So it's not just Levitical priests. It's not just about them. A yikra means every and each and every single person. God calls to each person. So let's see, what's uh, what's the summary here of this week's parsha? So God calls to Moses from the tent of meeting. There was a tent of meeting, which is separate from the sanctuary. Okay? God calls to Moses from the tent of meeting, and it communicates to him the laws of the Korbanot. Korbanot were means sacrifices but korban literally means that which is burned okay because most of the sacrifices involve that things that were actually burned excuse the lines over here i don't know the formatting and stuff of this it's constantly playing games um i haven't been able to fix it anyway the korban no the sacrifices they usually were animal and meal offerings brought to the um, to the Mishkan, which was the sanctuary, so God has a specific order and a specific protocol of how to approach Him, and that protocol has to be kept. And these include number one, God uh, teaches Moses there was something called an Olah, which means something that goes up, or it's the fancy term, it's an ascending offering. It's wholly raised to God by the fire atop on the altar. Fire has the capacity to raise. And that teaches us something extraordinarily profound, that uh, if we don't approach the altar of God with enthusiasm, with fire, with the desire, the burning desire in our hearts, it has no power. It has no power to move. If it doesn't move us, how is it going to move God or how is it going to move anybody angels or heaven the answer is it won't the power of our offering the power of our offering is dependent on on uh, the impetus the fire that accompanies it now there were five varieties of meal offerings one of them was the mincha 
which uh, uh, means literally a meal offering, and is prepared with fine oil, fine flour, olive oil, and frankincense. Then there was something called the peace offering, the shalamim. Really, shalamim means actually a whole offering. Peace is only one dimension of this offering. Now, this was meat that was eaten by, by the one bringing the offering after parts are burned on the altar and parts are given to the priest as their income. The different types of a sin offering, chatat, a chatat means to sin, to sin. So if one sinned, usually there are transgressions that were committed by mistake, um, or sometimes even uh, deliberate, you could bring a chatat, a sin offering. And these, so these brought an atonement, or really what they did was they provided a covering, a temporary kapara, which means a covering until they could be dealt with later. Uh, the ideal kapara was uh, not the sacrifice that was brought, but it was the uh, repentance that the atonement was signifying. Eventually the form takes over the substance, right? So in other words, people mistake the form for the actual reality. This would be like, for example, going to school and uh, uh, ordering the difference between going to school and actually learning something versus, you know, sending away a couple of dollars for a right. You the mail order the piece of paper which is supposed to the piece of paper is not what's important. The piece of paper just signifies what one has accomplished in going to that school and learning whatever program that one has done. Uh, so while the piece of paper is important, it's not essential and not the main thing. And the same thing was with the with these offerings and sacrifices. The main aspect is the repentance of the transgressions, either by that was done by the high priest, the entire community, the king, or even the ordinary Israelite. Then there's something called the asham, which is a guilt offering. This was brought by one who had misappropriated the property of the sanctuary. This is someone who's doubt whether he has to transgress. The person wasn't sure whether they did a sin or not. Or it also, Asham could also be brought for someone who committed a betrayal against God. One of the betrayals against God is if you betray a man, you betray people, right? There's a lot of betrayal going on in the world today. Uh, people betray other people by swearing falsely to defraud a fellow and a, a fellow person, right? It happens a lot in these courts today where people claim things against other people that are lies and they swear falsely about it. So if you did that, you brought an asham, you brought a guilt offering. We're in such a stage of reality today where people uh, don't even admit, uh, even though they claim to be spiritual they don't they claim to be perfect they claim they imagine in their own minds that they uh they have nothing to atone for they're and therefore they're not even beginning the process of repentance and needless to say god doesn't accept that posture and attitude let's look at the parasha a little bit and uh, we'll do a little bit of the reading and um the words of the Lord obviously have great power. And uh, um, there is this idea in the, Jew in the Jewish tradition that when we hear words of God, even though we might not understand all the words, if they are lodged in our being, eventually we will be, because of our earnestness to understand, eventually we will be taught um, though that those profound truths which are eternal. So Vayikral Moshe, and he called to Moses, by Daber Yahweh love, and the Lord spoke to him, Me'ol Moed, from the tent of meeting, where more saying, pretty wild, God speaking to man. Daber O B'nai Yisrael, speak to the children of Israel, Vamarta Lehem, and say to them, Adam ki akrid michem korban la denai. When a man from amongst you brings a sacrifice to the Lord, minha behemah, he is to bring it from animals, 
Menhabakar from cattle, Menatzon or for from the flocks, Takrivu as Korban Fem, you should bring near your sacrifice. Imola Korbano, if the sacrifice is a is a burnt offering, Menhabakar, which is from cattle, then the cattle has to be Zafar Kamim, has to be an unblemished male, Yakrivu Patak Ol Moed. And he shall bring it willingly to the entrance of the tent of meeting. Lirsano uh, before the Lord. Whatever we bring has to be brought willingly. And Yeshua spoke about this, this idea of the willingness of bringing whatever one brings to the Lord has to be done with a full willing heart. Otherwise, it's it's um, imperfect. The Samach Yado Al Rosh he shall lean his hand upon the head of the offering. Venir salo lechaper alav, and it will be accepted for him to atone for him. Veshachat et ben habakar lifnei Adonai, and he shall slaughter the young bull before the Lord. Veikrivu bnei Aaron and Aaron's descendants, akohanim et adam, they shall bring the blood. Vezarku et adam, and they should. Uh, dash the blood upon the altar al mizbeach saviv around asher petach which is at the entrance of the tent of meeting. So here we see a clear first indication that blood is what begins the atonement uh, process. Behiv sheet et haola and he shall skin the burnt offering v'nitachal talim tachan cut it into the prescribed pieces or sections. But not nu haron. A Kohen, and descendants of Aaron the Kohen shall place fire on the altar. And they shall arrange the, the wood on the fire. And Aaron's descendants, the Kohenim, shall then arrange the pieces, the head, the and the fat. Alho Itzim upon the wood, Asher Allah Esh, Asher Allah Mizbeach, which is on the fire that is on the altar. Vir Kirbo Kroav Yechatz Bamayim, and its innards and its legs should be washed with water. Vra Hiktir HaKohen et HaKol HaMizbecha, Ola Isher Rep Nikoach Ladonai. And they shall cause all of it to go up in smoke on the altar as a burnt offering, a fire offering. That has a pleasing fragrance to the Lord. Uh, and if his offering that he bought was from a flock of sheep, uh, or from goats, or then they should that the sacrifice that's acceptable has to be an unblemished male. And he shall slaughter it. On the northern side of the altar, it's a fun lift now, Dunai. Vizarku Aaron, Bnei Aaron, a cunning Mr. Malam is Ba'a Saviv, and they shall dash its blood around the altar, uh, around the around the circumference. When Atna told me to have, and they shall cut it into its sections, Vet Rosho, its head, Vet Pedro, and its fat, for Racha Kohen, Otam Alhaitzim, and a cone shall arrange on top of the wood, Ashalo Esh, Ashalom is Ba'a. That which is on the fire, which is on the altar, by Kerbar Karaim and its innards and its legs, you shall wash with water. It is a burnt offering, and it will come, it will go up with smoke as an offering that is a pleasant fragrance to the Lord. So, um, you should be having a dozen questions about what's going on here, and indeed. There are some profound books here, but I'm only going to do a few because we, uh, I'm down in, uh, I'm down out of uh, my regular location, and and uh, I asked also Jonathan to uh, share a little bit, so he'll be doing that. So here's just a couple of teachings, and just to give us a little taste of the profundity of what's going on here. You know, uh, a lot of the what's so-called what's so-called old testament has gotten a bad rap because you know christians just read this and they don't see anything about yeshua here they don't they don't it sounds boring what's this about you know 
cutting up animals and sacrifices and water and you know they they don't there's no real uh teaching and perception of what's going on here but let's look at this the the first word vayikra means to be called now uh the midrash rabbi tells us something profound why do young children begin when we study the torah with the book of leviticus in the jewish community the custom is not to teach children from the book of genesis but to start them from the book of leviticus why because as young children are pure young children are innocent that innocence is purity and let the korbanot the sacrifices which are pure they um they are taught about this so let the pure come and engage in the study of that which is pure so um this is a profound lesson well this is a profound lesson and one enter into the importance of holiness which can only exist with the reality of purity you cannot have holiness with impurity that the world would have you believe in many sections of christianity would have you believe that people can act impurely and still be holy that's not the case and so the midrash i think is trying to underscore this that man can learn purity from children now there are things that we can learn from children that are good and there are things that we can learn about children that uh we don't want to emulate right there is such a thing as i was a child and i thought as a child so there's childish thinking which a lot of people still have and that is not ideal people think it's oh it's so cute right but many people um don't understand that while children have very positive things that we can derive and learn from them there are things um also that we should not learn from them but one of the things we should learn from children and we can learn from children is their innocence and their purity which is something that we should strive for and this is i think what the midrash rabbi is getting at is this idea of that those who are pure study that which is pure if you want purity and this is a hint at this whole section here that it's speaking about seemingly speaking on the surface on a superficial level speaking about animals being sacrificed but on a more profound level what's being taught here is the idea of purity and holiness the idea of structure and order the idea of repentance and that purity requires repentance in order to come to the altar and then while the blood does atone uh, as i said previously it's only one piece of a of a pattern uh when one approaches of the lord if one is to approach the lord seriously okay let's continue and he called to moses why you cry moshe so you know if you want to be cynical and if we were atheists we would say well duh why does it why does it why does god have to tell us that he called to moses don't forget according to um our understanding of how the word was written god dictated to moses what to write in his holy word so when god came to this section over here in vayikra and it says vayikra el moshe you know a cynic might say well who else is he going to be talking to well of course it's moses why does the word have to Innocent. sadly this world is such where it uh, attempts to destroy and to change that purity but here we're told that he god calls to moses but when god calls to moses he's also if you read the hebrew very carefully why you cry you can put a comma there and it says el moshe god did call to moses but he's also calling to each and every one of us Now what is this about Moses? Why does so the cynics look at this and they say, well,
Bravo. Or if one or one heavy for two, if two people find something heavy to carry, it's easier if you have four people carrying it. But can a burden that's too heavy for 600,000? here was was that we just came from sinai where the israelites were saying we can't handle god this is too much that's what they told moses and yet god calls not only all of the israelites he also calls to Moses. So the question for the rabbi here is, how, this is a burden that 600,000 people could not carry because the power of God was so overwhelming, they felt that we gonna, they're going to die. So how, how is it that Moses was able to carry? This is the question. This is the profound issue that's being addressed here. This is one of the um, statements that's being opened up here. So uh, Moses heard the voice by himself and remained alive. And that should, uh, that should open up for us the issue of how is that possible? How is that possible that Moses was able to hear and yet the Israelites said, we cannot hear? And once we go through that door of understanding of who Moses was, and the secret, I think, begins with the fact that God tells us that he was the humblest of all men. The secret of Moses is why he was able to carry the burden of which half a million, more than half a million men were not able to carry, which is to converse with God. The profound secret, one of the profound secrets is of Moses amongst the many was the fact of his humility. When we have humility, we can carry a lot more than we think we can. And the same way that we, we cannot really hear the voice of God without being devastated sometimes. Moses was able to do that. Why? Because if you play, come to a place of nothingness, a place of humbleness, humility, that changes the entire equation. We come to God and say, I cannot do it of myself, but I only come to you. I have no wisdom, no understanding, no knowledge to share with you. I can only share with you what God has given me. We come from that place, then that change that, okay. then some that that changes the whole thing. Sorry, somebody said something. Question. Okay, so uh, that was a little bit of my uh, teaching here. It's a little shorter than usual because um, I'm glad to hand up the baton over to our. Good man, code searcher incorporated. So uh, Jonathan is going to now uh, be able to share with us um, some Torah and uh, and rich our Shabbat. So if there's no questions about this partial we can I have a comment, brother. What? I like what you said about the fire, about the altar that you you present the sacrifice with 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 uh, uh, with with in, with fire with integrity, right? Repeat fire, that again. With, well, fire usually has to do with um, the fire of the being, the entire being, the fire of enthusiasm, the fire, yeah. of, the fire of discipline, control, discipline, enthusiasm, right. Uh, Wholeness right. of heart, right? In other words, the spirit, the spirit, yeah. the whole spirit. Well, that's, a lot that's, of times we do things mindlessly, right? Without spirit, without enthusiasm. Without joy, without yeah, without no, that's joy. that's excellent. That's an excellent point. 
And and that's why I'm saying that that happens when you're when you're in the spirit of prayer, it's hot. The fire is hot. Your 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 prayer, the spirit is hot. And there's a lot of enthusiasm and it's glorious. And and that's a good point. And and that happens when you're in the spirit of prayer as well. And that was an excellent point that you that you brought up. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So this is a this is a, a very large teaching. We only touched on it. But yes, the fire of, of the soul or the fire of the spirit that comes before God has to be alive. It has to be awake. So many times we see people who just go through the motions. There's no fire. There's no passion. There's no involvement. There's no life in their actions. They're just going through, going through, as we say, going through sleepwalking, right? Um, and I think this is part of what God is saying by Yikra is God is calling us to wake up and to come to him when we come to him to offer what we can with fire, offer it with our entire spirit, our being. All right. Okay. So, right. We know God is a consuming fire. All right. So with that said, I, um, I'm happy to, uh, uh, to, to ask Jonathan, it's all yours. Um, as we say in Hebrew, bechavod, which means with honor, uh, step up to the plate, to the altar, <laughs> and give it your uh, give it your best with your new guayabera. I see a cool uh, guayabera shirt there <laughs> from Little Havana, straight from Little Havana. <laughs> okay, thank you, Shabbat Shalom. Swing for the fences, Jonathan. I'm muted. Stop here. Yeah. Shalom, you guys. Jacob's yeah. going to mute his computer, so there's not a... Yeah, go ahead. No, you muted me, Jacob. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, mute, mute uh, or turn, actually turn your, um, mute your, your microphone and also turn off your sound. We can't hear Jonathan now. We're trying to get it set out because me and Jacob are sitting right next to each other. Okay. So there's yeah, a bad. That's, okay. that's good. That's good right now. That's good. All right, you got your sound turned off. All right, I'm going to turn my sound on now. And now we're on my sound. All right, welcome you guys. How's everybody doing? Does anybody knows what the season we are in right now? What we're going into right now? Just kind of throwing that out there before we get. Can you um, stop share? Yeah. That's over. You guys know. Well, before that, how what are we doing? We're reconciling the new year. Now, for for Judah, Judah has a civil year they call Rosh Hashanah that is in the seventh month. And what do they do? They look for the sliver of the moon, two witnesses, they blow the shofar. Right? That's that's how they reckon the new year. But this is a commerce new year, you guys. This is not biblical, and every single religious Jew will tell you this. It's not a secret. They know it. Okay. It was it was changed for for many reasons, but for the most part for commerce. Okay. Um, it along the lines of a, a lot of other changes to the calendar were made because of commerce. Um, so we are coming into the end of this month, you guys. And some people will say it's the twelfth month, and I know there's some Hebrews that are going to say it's the thirteenth month. Right. It's all over the place with this uh, Hebrew roots. Movement. But what's important is we're trying to get this thing right. So uh, don't beat anybody over the head for, for being wrong. Uh, they'll catch up. All right. So what I wanted to do in this uh, in this time was uh, take the time to go over some, some verses that point out the importance of new moon and keeping the new moon. Because it's not just the seventh month, you guys. We're supposed to do this every month. This is how we mark our months. It's actually a celebration we're supposed to do every month, blowing the shofars. And back in ancient times, there was actually a sacrifice that was connected to this. So, um, you know, if David's doing it, and if all the Zadok are doing it in the ancient times, then we should be doing it as well, right? So let, let me just take us to some uh, scriptures. I want to read these. This is 18 verses. Um, that I found um, on the new moon or the new moon festival. 
I like what it says here in this thumb t- uh, thumbnail. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbaths. Uh, I think that needs to be pointed out because there are a lot of people who like throw stones because you go by the moon and you keep the Sabbath according to what the, the Bible says and not what someone interprets, you know, Qumran scrolls to say. OK, so the very first one, it, it, it says here comes from Numbers 28, 11. At the beginning of each of your months, you shall present a burnt offering unto Yahuwah, two bulls, one ram, seven male lambs and one year old without defect. Numbers 10, 10. Also in the day of your gladness and in your appointed feast on the first day of your months, you shall blow trumpets over your burnt offerings and over your sacrifices of your peace offerings. And they shall be a reminder uh, of you before your Elohim. I am you your Elohim. Psalm 81, three, blow the trumpet in the new moon, comma, at the full moon, comma, and on the feast day. Now I want to pause right here because there's, this is where a lot of confusion comes in with Psalm 81, three. And it's because of a word, you can find it in Strong's 3677, it's cassette. Now, King James interprets this word to be full. But I would suggest and, and submit that it's more accurately interpreted or, or um, described in the, in the English from Hebrew as fully concealed. Now, this throws a curve to a lot of people, and this is why we have a lot of people who, who observe the full moon as the new moon. I don't believe this verse is reiterating blow the trumpet at the new moon and uh, the, the, the full moon as the same day. I believe this is, this is three occurrences that Psalm 83 is, Psalm 81 verse 3 is describing, but I believe the translation into English is where we lose something. You ever heard the term or the phrase lost in translation? This is a great example of that, and it causes a lot of confusion. The, the scripture says, blow the trumpet at the new moon, which is Bechodesh, at the new moon, and at the full moon, and on the feast day. Okay, so we're supposed to be acknowledging these days, and, and clearly it's reference to the moon. Numbers 28, 11, 15, and at the beginning of each of your months, each, not just the seventh, you shall present a burnt offering unto you, two bulls, one ram, seven male lambs, and one year old without defect, and three tenths of an ephah of flying, uh, fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering for each bull, two tenths of fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering, and one for a ram, and one tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering for each lamb, a burnt offering of soothing aroma, an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. First Chronicles 23. And they also and they are to stand every morning to thank and to praise Yahuwah, and likewise at the evening, and to offer all burnt offerings to Yahuwah on the Sabbaths, the new moons, and the fixed festivals, in the numbers set by the ordinance concerning them continually before Yahuwah. Second Chronicles 2, 4, Behold, I am about to build a house in the name of Yahuwah, my Elohim, dedicating it to him to burn uh, fragrant incense before him and to set out the showbread continually and to offer burnt offerings morning and evening on Sabbaths and on new moons and on appointed feast of Yahuwah, our Elohim, this being required forever. Now, I know it says forever in Israel, but you know, we're not talking about the state of Israel. We're talking about the house of Israel, right? Are you in the house of Israel? I am. We are. If you are part of this movement, you are definitely the part of Israel. You're part of the 10 tribes that are scattered in the nations. You're not part of Judah, though you may have Judah in your, in your DNA because of the mixing. My point is it's required forever. The scripture says, I think, all of your generations for forever in Israel, right? We're not, this wasn't nailed to the cross. This wasn't something that only Judah did. It's for, it's for Israel forever. Second Chronicles 8, 12. Then Solomon burnt, uh, offered a burnt offering unto Yahuwah on the altar of Yahuwah, and that 
which he had built before the porch and did so according to the daily rule, offering them up according to the commandment of Moses for the Sabbaths, for the new moons, and the three annual feasts, the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Feast of Weeks and the Feast of Booths. And here's the thing. Now, it says, and the, the, the new moons and the three annual feasts. These, these feasts actually coincide with the full moon. Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of, of Booth. Passover. This is, this is during the time of a full moon. Okay, so this is very distinctive, different than the new moon, which is concealed. Would you agree? When there's no moon, that means it's concealed. Are we to believe that the full moon is concealed? Because that's what the word means, concealed. Fully concealed. It was translated full. Uh, it causes a conundrum, you guys, of, of, of biblical proportions. And it's only used twice in the scriptures. Maybe if we had it used more times, we could see a, 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 a pattern of use. But the fact that it's only used two times causes all of this confusion. But I'm hoping that you can see a distinct difference. Read between the lines, in other words, of what the text is actually seven. It's saying here. I don't believe it's reiterating, saying for the Sabbaths on the new moons, the three, it's distinctive if you're following. Okay. Second Chronicles 31 30. And he also appointed the king's portion of his goods for the burnt offering, namely for the morning and the evening burnt offerings, and the burnt offerings for the Sabbaths and for the new moons and for the fixed festivals that is written in the law of Yahuwah. Now, these fixed festivals. Orient, they they they're around the full moon. Our counts may start at new moon when there's no moon, like what we're about to do now for the new year to reconcile uh, Passover. You guys, we got to start at the beginning of the month, at the beginning of the year. Okay, Rosh Chodesh. How would you say the beginning of the year, Jacob? How does that? What is that? Um, well, that's what the Jews call, it, and it, that's a <laughs> that's a misunderstanding. For if we say that word, they're going to think the seventh month. So, but it's that's what they're calling the the new year. It's it's actually now. So it's a false Rosh Hashanah that that Judas doing. Okay, so I was thinking maybe there was a distinct word that we can identify, but actually Judah's using that word now wrongly. I might point out. Okay, so. We're talking about different days between the new moon and the full moon. We also placed ourselves under obligation to contribute yearly one third of the shekel for the service of the house of our Elohim, for the showbread, and for the continual grain offering, for the continual burnt offerings, the Sabbaths, the new moons, for the appointed times, and for the holy things, for the sin offerings we make atonement for Israel, and all the work of the house of Yahuwah. Ezekiel 45, and it shall be in the prince part to provide the burnt offerings, the grain offerings, the drink offerings uh, at the feast, on the new moons, and on the Sabbaths. All the appointed feasts of the house of Israel shall provide a sin offering, a grain offering, a burnt offering, in the place of offerings to make atonement for the house of Israel. Thus saith Yehuelohim, at the, uh, the gate of the inner court facing east shall be shut. Six, six working days, but it shall be opened on the Sabbath and open on the new moon. Here's where it really gets interesting to me because we see David himself. Because some would like to imply that because David had a, a high priest named Zadok, there's this whole other way of reckoning the, the week based on Zadok, which Happens to line up with Rome, by the way. Day one is Monday, I mean, uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, all the way to Sunday. Again, that's not necessarily so, you guys. If David was keeping this, the solar lunar, and we can see that because he's keeping the new moon, which is connected to it, then Zadok would be following. It's only logical. But we hear these teachings going around the internet based on no evidence at all. It's conjuncture and assumption made about what is written in Qumran and the fact that they found two different disks 
which means it's two different calendars, you guys, that they found in Qumran. One tracks the sun, one tracks the moon, and they're used together. There's a really famous author right now who's written a book about this. I think his name's Ken Johnson about the, the dial that tracks the sun. And that's all he focuses on, you guys, which is misleading the congregation to believe we're supposed to be on the solar with Rome and with uh, all the pagans. I, I strongly disagree with this. The moon is also part of Yahuwah's creation. He says in Psalm 104, 19, that it determines the Moedim. That word Moedim means what? Sabbaths, new moons, festivals. It's an appointed time. It's any of those times that are appointed. Yeah, so that's a little big, the letter. the, okay. letters are, the letters are too small to read from here. Okay. okay. I thought reading them myself would be uh would be fun, but I'll blow it up. No, we'd we'd like to follow you along. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. So for Samuel 20. And so David said to Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon. And I ought to sit down and eat with the king, but let me go that I might hide myself in the field until the third evening. Why is why is this about the third evening? Because new moon days could be two days. It's very, it's, it's, it's right there. If you can, if you understand what you're reading, it's right there. And he said, why will you go unto him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. Right, so two, two different days. Amos 8, 5 saying, when will the new moon be over that we may sell grain? Anybody understand why that is? We're not supposed to buy and sell on the new moon. But in Amos, they're complaining that the new moon, they're, they're dreading the new moon. Because why commerce? They want to make that money. When will the new moon be over that we may sell grain in the Sabbath, that we may open the wheat market to make bushels smaller and the shekel bigger and cheat with dishonest scales? Right? They, they dread the Sabbath and the new moon because they're all about the shekel. Yeah. Bring your worthless offerings no longer. Incense is an abomination unto me. New moon and Sabbath, the calling of assemblies. I cannot endure iniquity and, sol and the solemn assembly. I hate your new moon festivals and your appointed feasts. They have become a burden to me. I'm weary of bearing them. This is when, they, when they've drifted off into, the, into sin. Hosea 2.11, I'll also put an end to all Gati, her feasts, her new moons, her Sabbaths, and all her festival assemblies. Now, some will believe, and we, there's no contradicting with Yahuwah, keep that in mind. This prophet says that he would put an end to all her gaiety, her feasts, her new moons, her Sabbaths, and all her festivals. And understand what's happening in Hosea and what this book is talking about. It is talking about the sin and iniquity of Israel. And what? He's going to cause her, this harlot, to forget who she is. She's going to go out in the world and, and become a harlot, worship all these idols. She's going to forget her feast, her new moons, her Sabbaths, and all her fetal assemblies, right? Festival assemblies. This is what happened. And who is this? Who is this harlot? This is the church. This is the Hebrews that are coming out of her, come out of her, my people. But what, did he, what does he promise? He's going to call us to remember this again. He took it from us and caused us to forget because of the sin. It wasn't because he was putting an end to it and it was nailed to the cross, you guys. These statutes are forever. He doesn't, com, he doesn't contradict himself. So when I see someone trying to teach that Hosea is teaching that all oh, these Sabbaths and new moons are done away with, that is not what's going in the context of what's going on in Hosea. That's not what's being said. So don't tw twist scriptures to say what you want it to say. Hosea 5, here, here we go. Here's what a perfect example. They have dealt treacherously against you. They have borne illegitimate. This is what I'm talking about. And Hosea talks all about this sin. How they defiled everything. They defiled the new moon, the Sabbath. They were doing some, some diabolical stuff, you guys you know child sacrifice idol worship it was it was crazy they were basically blending Yahuwah's festivals with their pagan ideology 
and, to, and we see this today. Ch Catholic Church did the same thing. So, so did many other um, congregations do the same thing. Even the, the Protestants do the same thing, where they kind of mold and, and integrate these other pagan things in and defile what you was called holy in his days. Yeah. So this is where it comes and says, I hate the feast. Why? Because they've dealt treacherously against you. He calls us to forgive. But this generation he's raising up, when he's bringing Ephraim back in, and remember this, the story of Ephraim is essentially the story of the prodigal son, you guys. And the father and the brother that's standing there seeing the son come in, that's the father and Judah. This is the two sticks coming back together. And what happens in that story? Ephraim goes out in the world, forgets who he is. He becomes filthy. He's sleeping with pigs. He's doing, we can't even mention, right? He suddenly remembers his father and he wants to come back home. But he knows he can't. Not, not legitimately because he's done wrong. He's, he's blown it, in other words. But he does. He comes back home hoping for forgiveness and um, just a place in his father's house, right? What does he get? He gets a welcome home, right? And Judah's jealous. Why? Because he's been out there doing all this stuff, dealing treacherously. Yet there's forgiveness. This is a, this is the story of Hosea, you guys, and with the with the redemption of Gomer, and the fact that Yahuwah has this prophet married this prostitute with illegitimate children, humiliating him and his congregation, all so that he could buy her off the auction and block. So it would be a picture to us of what Yeshua did, what the Father did for us through Yeshua. He bought us back through Yeshua. And so we see that in, the, in this story of the prodigal son in Ephraim. And where we are today, we're coming back from out of the world. We're filthy. You know, we've, we forgot about all this stuff. We've been eating pork and bacon and, you know, everything. Just doing it up. Suffering. Obesity is running rampant today, right? But we come back home, and he teaches us these things. And we get cleaned up. That's what I see in that story, you guys. Moving right along, Colossians 2. Therefore, no one is to act as your judge in regard to food or drink in respect to a festival, a new moon, or a Sabbath day, things which are mere shadow of what's to come, but the substance belongs to Yeshua. Um, and so that's what the scriptures have. And I think it's 13 verses speaking about the, the moon, the new moon. Now, um, we find a day, how do we stop here? What we find a day is we've forgotten all of this. And um, it, it's coming, we're coming back to this. So that's kind of like we're, we're, we're learning to walk again with uh, this, this walk with Hebrew roots and uh, keeping the correct calendar. But you guys, uh, it's critical that we, we get it down and we get it to an understanding. Why? The scripture says it's a sign that you're, your mind. He's going to put a sign on us, right? What is that? That we keep the Sabbath? We keep his commandments? We're his. What if we're all over all, all over the page, though? You know, it's sort of like sheep. You know how sheep do? Sheep like to go. <laughs> Goats, too. Goats are really bad about it. Like to go their own way. And, and the shepherd has to chase after them and pull them back. Um, that's kind of how, how where we are. People are wanting to go their own way. And their own interpretation, um, even even bizarre interpretations of texts that they have no access to in the first place. And I'm talking about the Qumran caves. And the reason why I'm harping on that is because there's people out there that are using conjecture and assumptions about what is in those caves to come up with their own ideology and their own way of doing things. And they cannot use the Bible to prove their point. I like to go outside of it and say, oh, it's, it's all hidden in the caves. And this is what the Essenes were doing. I hear you saying that, but I don't have any proof that what you're saying is true. I'm sorry. So um, be careful what you listen to out there, you guys, on the internet. There's a lot of confusion, and this is, this is where Satan comes in. He doesn't want you to get it right. He loves the confusion. And the fact that Yahuwah says, this is a sign between that you're mine. You're open, you're open territory, you're open, you're target. You're, everybody understand that. When he says it, you keep my su su 
my Shabbats and my commandments. You're you're automatically a target by the enemy. He just pointed you out. It's like shining a, a bright light down. He said, this is mine. And he comes after us. Confusion everywhere. Arguments, divisions. We see that everywhere. That's not of you. Who are you guys? Okay. And we got to come to a place of unity, respect, even a dialogue. Call it debate, whatever. But don't call it declaring if you're in the wrong. Ego gets in the way of a lot of this, where people just, they want to declare something instead of dialogue and talking about the scriptures, hashing it out, looking at word entomologies. For instance, uh, another, you know, hang up people have is the word chodesh, where they want to say that word just means month. No, it's a synonym. It means both month and new, head of the month. It can be used. It depends on the context of the word being used. It's synonymous. You say new month, new moon. It's synonymous. So we need to understand this in uh, in the language itself. Um, I'd, I'd like to get into a discussion about that word cassette at some point. Uh, that's a whole nother teaching because it's such a divisive play. We have a whole demographic of, of Hebrews that want to keep the new moon on the full moon. Because of this one place in the scriptures where it's misunderstanding, it's fully concealed. How can you have a full moon that's concealed? It's obviously there. You can see it. But we have this, this conundrum with understanding semantics of words, especially in a foreign language, and you're, you're trying to understand it in the Hebrew, I mean, in, in the English. It doesn't translate well over. So we get this effect. Um, so. Um, I would really love to get into that sometime and just the, the entomology alone, that one word to settle a lot of disputes. So uh, that's where we are on the calendar, you guys. And what do we do? So what we're looking at today is uh, our, our Shabbat. It looks like it's going to be a one day new moon. So that means the first visible crescent of the, of the, the moon is going to be on the 22nd of March which will take us, and I'm using the Gregarian here, so we can have a point of reference. That's going to take us to the sixth for the count. This is really important, you guys, because if we get this count wrong, wrong the rest of the year is going to be wrong. I remember uh, a couple of years back, there was another Hebrew group that's, that didn't reckon the moon. They're, they're doing it now, but they didn't reckon the moon and they started Passover a full month behind the actual. And uh, some bad things happened. There was a huge flood and hundreds of thousands of dollars of property was damaged. Nobody was killed, but it was a scary situation for that group. They were camping in somewhere in Missouri at a campground that had a flash flood. It was a disaster. <laughs> I thought that it might be a, a wake-up call for, for this group, and it was for many, actually. Um, but, but for some, you know, they, they, didn't, they didn't see it that way. But when I saw the report of that, I immediately knew what it was because I had a conversation with the leader just a week before this about reckoning this day. And then this, this event happens. Now, I'm not saying that they were cursed or anything like that. I'm just, you know, I'm an observer of information. And when I see something like that, it takes, you know, I take pause and go, what's going on here? Okay. You shouldn't have chaos like that at these times. These are, these are joyous times, even Passover. And what it, what it commend, um, you know, the sacrifice of our Messiah and how it was, it was basically rehearsed for 1500 years after the time of Moses to the time of Yeshua. And then it's revealed at that time what it was all about. So for me, it's really an exciting time. My very first one, it was emotional for me because it kind of hit me really hard of what it was really all about, especially when I went to the Seder and I could, and it just dawned on me, oh my gosh, this whole story is right before them this whole time. I thought it was amazing. So it's an amazing time and um, there shouldn't be a bunch of chaos. And if there is, we should take pause and, and figure out what's going on. What, why, why is there so much chaos happening here? So we start our count. It's Nissan 1 coming up. We go to um, 
to eat into the 14th. Of course, we've got uh, unleavened bread and, and, you know, to getting the leaven out and things like that. But for the, for the Passover on the 15th, when we, we, we're celebrating, that day is a what? It's a high Sabbath. You guys know why it's a high Sabbath? Because it's on the 15th. It happens on a Sabbath day, but it's also Passover, making a high Sabbath. One month later, we see that, that Israel is in Elim, and something really interesting happens there. We're going to cover that in another teaching, you guys, but I believe that particular chapter in Exodus proves, hands down, the number sequence of 8, 15, 22, and 29 because of the numbers given. And a matter of fact, every time you see the Shabbat mentioned in the scriptures, you're going to see those days, 15. If you've got the 15th, guess what it does? It marks out the rest of the month for you. You see this about seven times in the scripture. Seven different places in the scriptures where we can reconcile a Sabbath based on the number 15. You know what that tells us? That all of the year is in that same pattern, you guys. And I hope you're going to see that in that teaching, you guys. It's very powerful. A lot of people woke up when I when I broke it down the, the way I've done before, very rudimentarily and, and visually seeing the count and seeing how they were on that count for 40 years plus. But we know for 40 years, continually in the desert, 8, 15, 22, 29 were the Shabbats. And if you know anything about this movement and, and your studies, you know that that is absolutely the, the lunar cycle and the quarter, um, the quarter um, face of the moon. They didn't have digital. They didn't have Facebook. They didn't have cell phones, you guys. This is how they, they reckon the time. I've told this many times, that if you'd gone into a coma in the ancient times for a few weeks and suddenly woke up, you know how you can know what day it was? Not by walking out and looking up at the sun, you guys, because it looks the same every day. But if you had woke up and walked outside and looked at the cycle of the moon and where it was in the sky, you could know exactly what day of the month it is. That's a fact. And most people could do that in ancient times. Why? Because that's what they had. They had the stars. We've lost that in, in this generation that we were in. We, we, can't even, we can't even read the stars anymore. Good to know that they have phone apps that you can use to look at the constellations and kind of get familiar because it does play a role in prophecy, you guys, in the end times. So it would behoove us to learn these things, okay? But it's Yahuwah's design. It's his clock. It's perfect in his design. And we can't, we can't uh, manipulate it. If you try, you can fix days in the calendar all you want, but it's not correct. Um, and this, this unfortunately happened in 325 AD under the, the uh, Emperor Constantine. Put a lot of pressure on Hillel II to come up with a calendar. This is what they're using today, you guys. The day is fixed on a Saturday. Rome come up with its own Sabbath Sunday. And from that point on, you guys, Judah was keeping a Saturday. Rome was keeping a Sunday. But again, this happened 325 years after Yeshua. So what does that mean? You think Yeshua was um, resurrected on a Sunday? Not at all. It doesn't, it doesn't compute. It was a Wednesday that, that the crucifixion happened. We can see that on Yahuwah's calendar. Now, this also causes a lot of confusion today. And even it even is some banter for atheists that, that uses logic and, and mathematics and proves, proves that there couldn't have been a, a, a crucifixion and resurrection based on the numbers. You see the conundrum, this misunderstandings happened and they're throughout the scriptures you guys and it's not your fault it's not my fault we're talking about the lying pen of the scribe that's happened and so here and there we've got some defects um, in the word i'm not saying the words tainted but definitely the the enemy through time has tried to obscure and even hide things the name of the father was removed from the scripture seven thousand times you guys and we were given a false name and then they obscured Yeshua's name and gave us something that doesn't even translate. If you look at the name Yeshua or, or Yahshua, from Hebrew to English, it's Joshua. 
And we know that because in the in the Torah or in the Old Testament, rather, in the story of Joshua, if you look at the Greek word given there, it's the same one used for Yeshua in, in the New Testament. However, when they translate that for, for Yeshua to Jesus, it's lost somewhere. It's, Wait a minute. Well, I thought this was Joshua. It's the lying pen of the scribe. And it's and it's, it's confusion. And we already know where that comes from. Why would that happen? Well, because the plain text says where two or more are gathered in my name, I am there also. So don't you know that in the handbook of the enemy, probably on the first page somewhere, it probably says we got to get rid of the name. Does that make any sense? There's power in the name. This is why it was taken. And some Christians will argue with that and say, no, God wouldn't let that happen. Well, Yahuwah did let it happen. That's a fact. We can see clearly that it was changed. Oh, well, he knows my heart. I just call him God and Jesus. Well, he knows your heart too. And the word says it's wicked. Where do we go from there? So it's it, this is where it, it's it's really important to get really into the word and not take for granted what your pastor tells you or some teacher tells you, but actually go and look. Even me, me telling you this, I would encourage you to go and search that matter out and look at it for yourself. And if you're not convinced, let's talk. Bring questions. We can we can talk about it. But certainly don't just don't just listen to the TV preachers and take for granted what they're saying is true. They may have a sincere heart, but you guys, what they're teaching and, and putting out in seminaries today is very questionable. I mean, there is some, some, some root truths there, but for the most part, it's tainted, it's watered down, it's completely changed. I really believe we were given a false messiah through the, and I might not even get in trouble saying that. That's a really deep teaching, you guys. But I, I see two different personas. When we're talking about Jesus Christ of the Catholic Church and Yahshua, the historic person, the Jewish man that died on the cross that was the son of God, the son of, El of Elohim. I see two different ones. They like to put the one in front of the other and obscure the real one. But I clearly can see two. One's nailed it to the cross. One says the Torah is forever. And I can go on and on with a list, you guys. Don't, don't get even get me started. But I see two. And why would they do that to us? It's called bait and switch, if you didn't know. The enemy used a trick. He gave us a false one. I think you would met us there because in Leviticus, I think somewhere in the, uh, Leviticus 17 is where it says, uh, the congregation is not held accountable for ignorance or even deception like this. So you got saved in the name Jesus, right? I did too. I've seen healings in the name Jesus. That's where we were in that deception. But then, as you know, with relationships, you get to know someone, you find out the truth. You find out the name. And that's what happened to me and many other people. Is uh, Yeah, we got saved in, under the name Jesus. We call him God our lives. And yes, he did meet us there. And we did see salvation. We did see healings and all those kinds of things. But you know what? He taught us a name. And I believe there's power in the name. The actual name. I'm not saying there's not capabilities of the Father to, to meet us. That's not what I'm, I just told you. He will meet us where we are. But, but when there's a relationship there and the time's right, I've also learned that, too, that he sealed this information to a particular time. It wasn't available to my grandfather or to anybody who came before us. I believe it's connected to the curse that's um, in Ezekiel 4 and a part of that, that, that we were just to forget. And you will allow it. But then what does he do? He brings us back. Just like in the story of uh, the prodigal son, we come back to the father. And he's revealing this, this to us. So, um that's where we are, you guys. We got Passover coming up in like 16 days. Yeah, 16 days. So uh, if, you, if you're going to participate in that, now's the time to get ready. Now's the time to get the leaven out and all those kind of things and uh, get ready. And you should see a full moon 
at Passover, just like we do every year. It's part of it. So that's what I have for you tonight, you guys. Um, I appreciate you letting me talk and share that with you. Um, you guys got any questions? Or anything you want me to cover? Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah. And this is Matt Sen, and uh, thank you, Jacob, and uh, for your presentation. Absolutely. You said new moon will be on the 22nd? That's when we're going to see the first, and that's when we're going to see the, the sliver. New moon day is actually the 21st, so we see the sliver on the, the 22nd. So, yeah, that's it. And I know, I know Walter does it differently, and, and you may see a, a day difference based on on how they reckon, that's another teaching, how people reckon the new moon. When is it? Is it when we don't see the moon? Is it when we see, when we see the first visible crescent, we know that new moon has, is over and we're at day one. We're coming up in, into day two at that point. So um, I hope I didn't add any confusion yeah. to you guys. I, I know Walter does it differently, but it, if it is, it's one day. It's not gonna be a huge difference like the, the full moon, new moon people. Okay. Okay. So you, this is my team. So you go by that. You go by the. Go by the go. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Matson. Go ahead, Matson. <laughs> You're very kind. No, I, I, I don't know how uh, Walter does it. Um, but I'm, th I'm thinking I'm asking you a question. Uh, yeah. And uh, it seems the will will happen the twenty first. Yes, 21st is no first moon. That, that is technically 20th. new moon day. Yeah. When we see the crescent at the end of the mm. next day, that's when we know new moon is over. It, we can only know new moon is, is over when we see that crescent. Otherwise, it's going to be, exactly. be a two-day new moon. Does that make sense? There can but, possibly uh, be no. two days that you don't see the moon, that it's completely yeah. obscured. And it's because the, the rotation is like, uh, it's, it's obvious. It's, 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 uh, it's not a circle. It's oblong. So, so the, it ebbs and flows. And so this is why at the head of the month, we have to view it and, and cite it because it can be one of those days. Now, now calculations and, you know, com supercomputers have gotten really good at, at calculating that ebb and flow of, you know, is it going to be a, a, a two day or a one day? Um, but this particular calendar that I got, I'm looking at is only calling it yeah. for one day. So that means on the 22nd, we will see the crescent, and that will be our signal that new moon is over. We have started the month. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. But, but let me get this straight. But you you said uh, that will be the first day. The 20 you said that will be the first day, but it's you like it, said it's like uh, the Passover will be on the 6th. Yes. It, it will be on, on the 4th, on the 6th, or on the 6th. No, it's gonna it's it's gonna be on the sixth. That's that's uh, the fifteenth. If you count these, from the, if you count from the twenty, uh, if you let's see. second, yeah, if you count if you're counting from new moon, so so the next day is day two, right? So that's the twenty second. So you got one, two, three, yes. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, I see that. So this calendar I'm looking at is a little has a discrepancy in it. So they're counting from what? They're counting from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. So we so this calendar is that we, we're supposed to count on from the twenty seconds on on. And then that that's the Passover will be on the fourth. I got the fifth or the sixth, Matson, and so we, you know, and I'm only I'm going by this calendar, and I, I hate doing that because I'm a believer that we're supposed to witness this the 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 moon. So this one's only showing a one day new moon. So that's what I'm basing this on. I happen to notice that Parable of Vineyard probably yes. did the same thing because he just did a re video and re uh, and, and corrected himself and and called the Passover, uh, and he's going off of when the new moon is going to be sighted. Now, I think that they're calling for it, if I looked correctly, on renewedmoon.com. Let's go there real quick, you guys, and, and look at this together. 
that the first visible crescent is going to be visible from Oman. And they're not even sure. It's probable. So that's that's where it's important. Somebody has to view the, the crescent so we know where the mark and to count from. Yeah. But that does put the full moon on the, the, the 15th, which would be the 6th on this calendar. So, you know, the evening of the of the you know, Passover technically starts on the 14th and with all the process and everything that we're going through. So, but the the sign that we see that it's 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 Passover's completed is the full moon, right? When we see that. And incidentally, that's just when they leave at the evening of the 15th. That why? Because it's the Sabbath. They wouldn't have left in the daytime. So they're waiting till night and it's a full moon. So this calendar is showing that it's the sixth, Matson. But again. I feel better if we see the the sliver and know when the when the count is. What what is the what's what is the calendar you're looking at too? This is um it's 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 called the 2023 moon calendar that that somebody gave to me. Now there's other minist there's ministries that are putting these out. Okay. Uh, I know that Zen Garcia is putting these out, but that's the thing. It's hard to calculate unless you're using a supercomputer, how many days it's going to be for each month, whether it's going to be a one or two days. And sometimes they're wrong. They can be off one day. And so, you know, that's been a long going ar argument and debate with me and some other people's, but it, even still, I've, I've got this one and I'm looking at it and um, I see that we're in a waning crescent tonight, which means that it's going to put new moon tomorrow and we'll see most likely on the 22nd. Yeah. No? Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree. So, um, and uh, Orthodox Jews have the, the but, Passover on the 5th. Yeah. Yeah, see, we're even getting discrepancy on, on the, the different calendars. And Adam even said that on his video. But now I'm discovering that just from this, and I don't even know who put this out. It just says moon calendar on here. But again, this is what this goes when, back to. When, this is why there has to be. You're breaking up a little bit, Matt. So what did you say? Oh, yeah. I said when you calculate uh, the, the new moon will be on 22nd, it will bring you to the fourth as the Passover. Yeah. And that's been that, and again, that's very possible based on when we see that moon. But I'm, I'm just telling you that this has got it on the on the sixth, and the where they're marking it, yeah. it I, shows it shows the sixth of the fifteenth of Nissan on here. But it, this could be wrong. That's why it's, it's we, we're supposed to go with two witnesses to, to sight the moon. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're not you're not unchecked. Maybe they 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 when they get the Passover when when they get the new moon twenty. On, on this calendar, it's showing a new moon on the 21st. On this one. 21st? On the 21st. Uh, but then they're 21st? Showing, on the 21st. But Close then the showing, door. Then they're yes. showing. Can the phone number. Uh, hey, phone number 1496. Please mute your mic. Who is phone number? I have no idea. It's a three eight six six eight. Uh... That might be Steve. Steve. Uh, no, there. no, that's me. Please mute your mic. I'm sorry. You're going to be talking. Yeah. So again, now, this. Jonathan, let me get this straight. Are, are you? Do you go by the conjunction or the sight or the sliver? I, it's both. When I don't see the moon, I know we're in the conjunction. When I see the the sliver of the moon, I know that we're already into we're in day two. Okay, does you that know, make any it, sense? But at the, the at the sighting of the know, sliver, a lot of people go by the by the sliver. But it's, and I I just said that I know that that 
Walter teaches differently. So it's worth, worth less chance. So there's a day discrepancy in, in that. Because many times you can't see the, the sliver either. And it's not, it can be a little tricky. Yeah. But thank, thankfully, we, we, you know, we've got apps that we can use that we could, we could actually, that are a little better than the, uh, the calendars that are fixed like a year ahead of time. Yeah, no, that's for sure. Now, is World's Last Chance, are they uh, accurate with their calendar? They're a, day, they're a day off from me, which is what Walter is. Walter has always been a day off from me. So he's closer to the world's last chance. Uh, yes, I think he goes with what model. they said. Yeah. And uh, what, Zan Garcia, which one does he follow? Uh, I, that's a good question. I think he goes with the with the, the sliver because um, what's her name? Um, that, that wrote Diane, the book. Diane, Diane Culver. Diane Culver goes by that. So I think Zen yeah, goes by the sliver. I have her book, but there's some faults in her reckoning. Yeah, yeah. I have, but actually, I gave that book also to Walter to review. Uh, see, there's nobody, there's no, there's no general consensus. Everybody has a slightly different version. Even okay, right. So uh, let me just say it one more time. When there's no moon, we're fully concealed. That's new moon. When we see the crescent the next day, we know that new moon is complete. There's not going to be another day that's, that's no new moon. That's new moon. Does that make sense? So we see that crescent. We know that new moon's over. And we're in, we're going, it's day two. Does that make sense? So we are, day one was, was the new moon day. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Well, that's what, I guess the sliver is the confirmation of what determines whether it's a, it's a one or two day. Yes. Um, transition. Yes. If we don't, if we don't, if we don't see the, the moon that first night, we look for the sliver the next day, that, that next day. If we don't, we know it's two days. Right, because it's possible you don't see that sliver for two days, and it doesn't happen a lot throughout the year, for the most yeah. part. It's only a but few it, times of the year. Where but it does happen. happen, and we have to it be. It does aware. happen. Yeah, uh, and yeah. Uh, which is also contrary. Other people go by the full moon, and I agree with Walter. It says then you're then you're teetering on um, idolatry because then you're you're really. It's it's the same kind of uh, approach that the sun worshippers have as well. Yeah. I agree, but it also I think it, it it goes even further that with the misunderstanding of what uh, cassette is, and that King James in Strong's has it identified as a full moon, but when you look at it closely, it means it, it means concealed or fully concealed. But they 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 I think they get stuck on the word fully because they interpret it as a full moon, and it's really fully concealed. That's when you yeah. can't see the moon at all. Yes. That's which the, I, that's, that's which the more again, accurate uh, interpretation. Which, again, I agree with what uh, Solomon says, that a little bit here, a little bit there. We should not base a whole doctrine just on one or two verses. You're right. You're right. It's very dangerous because then you, you get tunnel vision and you miss a lot of other things. When we when we study any subject that we're trying to clear from them, we got to take all of the verses that are available at the time, plus the Holy Spirit guiding us and be humble and teachable because we're also on a need to know basis. It's never mm -hmm. going to be completely resolved until Yeshua finally is here with the father. And so we should be more humble and, and there's always going to be present truth that keeps opening up. And yeah, I hate them when these people, they, they, they get good at maybe one point of doctrine and then they think they got it all figured out. And next thing, they're sinning. They're, 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 and, and there's a, nar a narcissistic behavior and what, what they say is what it is. <clears throat> and then on top of they have uh, followers who, 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 who egg him on or egg these leaders on. And then you have a, a disaster, cult, cultic behavior, cultic right. personality. Unfortunately, you're right. We do we do see some of that happening in um, some communities. So, so what is Walter? Walter believes in what? He believes you should count it. The new moon is when you dark. see the sliver only. No. Completely dark moon. Completely dark moon. And he's he's right. But he, he starts his count. Um, yeah. A little well, you, you're using what I see, which is interesting. You're using the sliver as the confirmation that okay it's over and it's either one day or two day the, yeah. the conjunction was a new moon but yeah. you gotta know where the transition happens yeah and, and then some people call 
that's that first sliver day one or some of them call it day two so there's this discrepancy on how they observe new moon and again you know you none of us knew this years ago you guys we're all learning it's like we're, we're in grade school and we're learning this but as we go through time and, and more revelation is brought forth to us i think we'll get it um i find it really interesting that in spite of all the confusion you was lining up some of these calendars this year because there's some guys that are they don't even reckon the moon at all, but somehow or another, they're celebrating Passover the same time <laughs> this year. They weren't last year. They were off. But, um, you're on, you're on, and, and so, you know, you knows how he does these things. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine it. The Holy Spirit told me one time that when we see what happens in the upper room, what happened in the upper room during the time of Shavuot, and I don't like to call it Pentecost, you guys. That's a whole other teaching. It's a misnomer. Um, you can't grow wheat in 50 days. It's actually a count of 250s, okay? But that aside, when they're in the upper room at Shavuot, there is a um, caveat to why the Holy Spirit fell upon them. You guys know what it is? They were in one mind and one accord. They weren't on five different calendars. They weren't bickering back and forth. They were in unity and one mind and one accord on that day. Holy Spirit revealed to me that this is going to happen again. And uh, it's part of the, the outpouring of um, the spirit upon all flesh. And I think I can't imagine that. That's like so far beyond, you know, it's like herding cats. You guys, if you ever got five or six cats and you're trying to get them to go in all one direction, you can't do it. They, they're minded. Are, goats, too. But really bad about that. But to get everybody on the same sheet of music of all different kind of backgrounds is so astronomically. Yeah, no, no, nothing less than a miracle. I mean, yeah, it's got to be a miracle. Because right now um, we couldn't be more polarized. Right. It's just like we're just so far apart. I can't see it, but the Holy Spirit's told me there's coming a day where we're all going to be united in this thing. So I don't know what happens. I would um, like to think so. Those who are humble and meek, probably is going to be around that. You know, those going to be the probably first. so. I think I think so. I think um, I, I think when we all get humble and really hungry for truth and for this kind of knowledge that's when he's going to release it to us well, probably when the when the thing hits a fan then a lot of people will be humbled yeah you know you know you guys you guys you're, you're on this new moon thing where you're keeping the sabbath by the new moon a lot of people can't do that man a lot of people cannot do that so how yeah. is god going to deal with the people that can't do this stuff you know i what? mean even if you're right brother even if you're right Okay, and I'm not saying you're wrong. Even if you're right, you're right about all this. And there's there's a little slivers of discrepancy here and there about the new moon. But a lot of majority of people, 99% of the people cannot do this, man. It's not feasible. We can't do it. We got to work full time. I know what, you, what you're, you're saying, way. Kevin. So, you know what? You're on that hamster wheel of Babylon, Kevin, and you can't get off. I feel you, brother. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Unfortunately, there's nowhere in the scriptures that says, um except for, or, you know, there's an amendment for these people who have these nine to fives and stuff, oh, brother. Exactly. Jonathan, can I address that for a second? Sure, uh, absolutely. Kevin? Yeah. Hey, brother Kevin, um, you got to be careful. Your, your thought pattern on this, it's no different from when we were learning about the Sabbath. A lot of people, when I study the Sabbath, they go, well, maybe you're right, but I can't do this. This is what everybody does. And uh, I work doing, you know, Saturdays and there's no way I can get, then it's like, who are we going to obey? Are we going to obey God or man? And who are we going to trust? Can God not supply all our needs when we obey, even though we don't see the way? It, it, it's just, uh, it's like anything with, uh, as we step into further into truth, it's going to, it's going to set us apart even more. And that's yeah. what the word sanctified means, being set apart. So yep. either we can't ex expect to be sanctified and to yet remain in the world. The yep. Lord is slowly and mercifully drawing us out of the world uh, in a way that hopefully we can handle, but we have to trust him. And he can more than supply for our needs. And if he closes the doors, then he can open a window or another door. Absolutely. So that 
that that you gotta watch out because that's revealing a bit lack of faith. Can and I, and I agree with that? I agree with that completely. But he's got to open the doors and make the provision for it. You're right. I mean, you pray right. the prayers. Your heart's willing to do it, but you know he has to open the doors. Uh, another thing is, brother Jonathan, are you gonna? Do you, can you get anybody to do? Can you get anything, buddy, to do the CBDC uh, code? Have you known anybody, brother Martin or Scott Bennell? Uh, any one of these guys that can do the CBDC because this thing's coming down the pike. They implement this digital currency where they get rid of the cash. I mean, somebody's got to get on this stuff, man, and do this. So we know. What's I, I think I think there's a couple of guys that are that are, you know, looking at that kind of stuff. But I haven't. I really haven't had the time, man. Um, I've been dealing with uh, stuff trying to, trying to get back into the bee business and and you know dealing with the is, things that I've been dealing coming, with. Yeah, if you could get somebody to get on it, because this is coming down the pike hot and heavy. So this is a major, this is the whole, I've seen the plan of the whole damn COVID thing. And this is the end game. This is the, the end goal of the whole COVID thing is this sit, a central bank digital currency where they put a chip in your hand, whatever the hell chip, whatever they want to do to you, but they get rid of the cash. This is the whole goal of it. So it's very critical. We know what the heck is going on, Jonathan. You tell these guys, to put a red flag up and hit, hit this thing hot and heavy. Well, you know, I did, I did, you know, codes on the mark of the beast. 2013, 2014, this is really before crypto and blockchain and all that started being, I mean, it was around, but it's not like it is now. We were clearly seeing in, in those codes, you guys, that there's no question. I, I did follow up uh, tables on this with Bitcoin. OK, and this is why I'm strongly against Bitcoin and all these cryptos and stuff, because it is the preamble to the B system. They're going to destroy the dollar. OK, right now, the dollar is supported by petro, petro uh, oil. It's no longer supported by gold and silver. And they want to go to a different standard, particularly Russia and, and China. What they're trying to do is trying to destroy us economically um, and, it, it, you know, the Bible says it's going to happen. To, to be blunt, you guys, and it's not something we should fear. If you're in the palm of your, your father's hand, you shouldn't be fearing this stuff, okay? He says it's going to happen. They're going to try to get us to this system. You, if you look around, and in particular, while I'm in, in Florida, Big Brother is everywhere, you guys. It's almost like London, England here with all the cameras. There's nowhere you can go where there's no cameras, right? So they're tracking you everywhere you go. When you go to Walmart, I happen to know this. They got some of the most sophisticated facial recognition systems in Walmart, and it's a test system. As soon as you walk through the door, and they know who you are because you check out what you're checking and with your card. And when you run that information, guess what? It's in it's in a computer system. So every time you come to Walmart, they know what you're buying. They know who you are. They know everything. Well, magnify that everywhere you go to your bank. Uh, Gas. They got cameras at the gas station. Uh, everywhere you go, there's cameras. Every time you use your card, you're you're leaving a digital footprint, right? Unless you're using cash, they're tracking you. Okay. They're going to do that in a different way, and they're already implementing this. And Kevin, you're right on. You're on target, man. It's with some kind of chip, and I think it's based a lot on the uh, identity theft crisis that we've had. That they're going to migrate us to, to the, and that's going to be the selling point. Nobody can steal your hand or steal your forehead, right? You know, it's part of your person, right? Yeah. Because they can steal your identity at, at randomness, it seems. And then they're going to hurt us to the, nobody's going to steal your identity. Now we know who you are because we're tracking you. Unless they cut your hand off or cut your head off, you know, they know where you are, what you're doing, who you're talking to. Listen, they're doing this in China right now. They're tracking everything. And it's all on this thing right here. This is how they're doing. It's not in their fingers, in their hands or on their forehead. It's in their hand. But it's, you know, how far of a jump is it from here to your hand in technology? You see what I'm saying? So little by little, with these technologies and things that they're introducing to us, they're, they're leading us to a slaughter, so to speak. All right. So we see it happening. We even see it coming down the pike, as you say, uh, Kevin. Um, 
yeah, we could probably find find information on this in the codes, but what do we do? What do we, you know, we can't, we don't pray it. We don't pray it away. You who says it's going to happen, right? Yeah. We can That's we can pray for protection and pray, pray for wisdom on it, um, but it's you know the word's going to be fulfilled. These these kind of things are going to happen. Yeah. But you know it should be encouraging, yeah. even in the face of what does the scripture say? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I feel no evil, right? We should take comfort in, in, in seeing these fulfillments of scripture because we know what does it mean? Huh? It's he's coming soon. He's almost here. It, maybe even in our generation. I couldn't imagine that. I'm just I'm just letting you know that what I heard from the Ruach is total uh uh uh, financial collapse, the digital reset, digital currency reset, which is the CBDC, the, the, the end of the cash, and then revolution. And yeah. that's where I've seen buildings burnt down. Other people see buildings burnt down, total chaos. Um, you know, the, these things are going to happen. So I'm just, I'm just trying to rain the warning flag and give a heads up. This stuff is coming. There could be mass chaos, mass shooting, mass chaos and killing yeah. and murders and, and revolution so i'm just letting you know this is i'm trying to foresee what's coming and prepare for it to get ready and shout a heads up to those who need to, to know amen about. yeah and most people where i'm listening on uh bid shoot rumble they all know what's going on they 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 see the wall, writing on the wall and everybody's uh raising them the, the I, I think that's a canary in the cage brother that, that, that we're, we're seeing so um you, you know uh you're absolutely right um I think it's inevitable that those kind of things are going to happen. But again, what, what does that mean for us as believers? It means we're very close. It gets darker before uh, this, the sun rises. You realize that, right? So right before Yeshua comes back, it's going to be dark. It's going to be some bad times. But the scriptures tells us, blessed is he who endures until the end. we got to endure. And so, and overcome, that's right. We stick together. And here's another thing, and I hope this is encouraging. Guys, what the Holy Spirit revealed to me about the, the, the Hebrew community, the, the, the set apart community, the remnant in the last days, is he's going to have us, he's going to gather us into these little groups like stalls in the field. That we're going to be standing with each other and supporting each other. You can't take a stalk of, of wheat and stand it up by itself. It'll fall over. But you can grab a whole, whole clutch of, of wheat, bind it together. And stand it up in the field and you can stack them all together. The reason they do that is because if you lay it down, the, the grain will get moisture, it'll get crushed under the weight of all of the of the grains. They like to stand it up. You'll see it in every every old time picture of, and they don't do this anymore, you guys. But in old days, when they did it by hand, they stood it up in the fields, called it stalls, and then the wagon would come and they would unload the field from the stalls. That's how the Hebrew community is going to be all around the world, is like stalls in the field that we're going to congregate, who is going to centralize or synergize or whatever the word is, it's going to bring us together like magnets drawn to each other. You know, I didn't know um, Walter and Jacob and um, the rest of you until up until a few months ago. And how did he do that? He did it through the feast. He brought us together and, and made new relationships. It, that's what he's doing all around the world. And so we help each other. We can't do it by ourselves, you guys. Like, I said that that grain can't stand on its own. It needs the other grain to stand with it. Yeah, I think the fact that we've seen all this is really amazing because we can see prophecy fulfilled. And the only thing that gives me is more certainty in that the word of God is totally truth. And I have total faith in his plan of salvation and in the ways that Yahuwah has to know how to redeem his people and bring them into a safe place. He will do it for us. I completely trust him. You know? So when we see all these things happening, Kevin, I'm not afraid. I'm encouraged, actually. I feel very, very strong faith that the Bible is truth and the word of God is prophecy. And it's been written, just like Yahshua said. It's been written already. It's been prophesied. So what should I fear? And the calendar, you do it with faith. You don't have all this logistic 
you just jump in. You know, when you see the pool, I jump into the water. I jump like a swimmer. I have no fear. It's the sea and I trust in the father with all the monsters inside the pool. You know, just going back on that subject, as um, you know, Martin was, he hit on something really powerful there about the faith. Um, when I had my school going and I was teaching this, this calendar and, you know, I had um, all of my students were, you know, in some form or fashion had something that it made it difficult for them to keep, the, you know, many of them were like nurses or, or professional and they had the, the typical nine to five and they were set in that. Monday through Friday, you know, Saturday and Sunday, they're off. And they worried about that. They really wanted to keep the Shabbat. And we all prayed about it. And, you know, there was a couple that actually took a step. And that's what it takes. You got to take the first step for you to meet you. And they did that. And they went to their bosses and said, hey, you know, I'm a Hebrew. And, you know, my Shabbat goes on the moon. And it changes every month. And, and you know, they, they can... If they get to the point where they can anticipate month to month when that day is going to be, okay, some months it might be Monday, the next month it might be Tuesday, okay, so month to month, you can plan that out, and if you if you went to your bosses with this, you know, uh, you know, really good presentation that, that this is, you're strong in your faith, you really want to do this, is there any way that we can work around this, my schedule's my Shabbat's going to fluctuate. I can work on Sundays sometime, or I can work on uh, Saturdays, right? Because you're not in that paradigm anymore, right? That's not the, the Sabbath. It may be for the mainstream. And so that typically, it, you know, to your employers, I can work on Saturdays. I can work on Sundays, unless it's the Shabbat. You, you know, sometimes you can be seen as an asset because you're a person that you can come to work on Saturday when nobody else will. You see what I'm saying? Whatever the circumstance is, if you take that first step with faith and pray about it and say, Father, make a way, open this door for me. I'm going to walk and take a step, but you got to open that door. I feel confident that he will do that and he will free that up for you because I feel you, Kevin. I feel you. You're on that hamster wheel and you can't get off. It's a grind, man. And you're not alone. There's other people that are stuck there. You're right there, or you got to pay your college debts off, and then you know that's like a mortgage for some young people today hundreds of thousands of dollars, and they have to work and have to get this thing paid off. So they're grinding, right? That you know, that's the way we can. I think the enemy keeps us enslaved through those kind of that, things. Yeah, that's and, a trap um, of the devil. I've been yeah. personally been yeah. fortunate enough that the father has made a way through being being self-employed through youtube and and other ways he's blessed me that, that i haven't had to worry about that so um i'm not necessarily on that you know in that struggle with you but i feel you on, on that brother um i do know a lot of people that that they yearn to keep the the solar lunar calendar because they see it and they know it's true but they're stuck in that grind i don't know the immediate answer to it brother but i will continue to to, you know, to pray and um, ask the father to make a way. And look, we, we're trying to do something to to add in stream, you know, streams of income, really, where we could be free to expand, right? You might want to think about doing that as well with the yeah, chickens, God's and giving, God's honeys, giving all those kind of things. Income coming in from <laughs> other streams where you can stop, yeah. you know, yeah, that's your job that's, and, that's and what I think. You know, yeah, do, that's what do I'm something like that. Do. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm trying to get multiple streams of income coming in right I now. I think you muted, Kevin. Uh, yeah, hello. Can you hear me? If you're talking, can you hear me? Hello. He's not. Well, that's all I got, you guys. Yeah. Um, what did you say for the name of Yahusha? Uh, the, the the Yeshua's name. It's not Yeshua. You said Yahoshua or Yahusha. Oh, I can't hear him because we're muted. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, can you hear me, Jonathan? No, you hear me, Jonathan. You can't. So I don't know why he can't hear. He, he must have accidentally muted his. Yeah. Now, now he muted his mic. We're trying to manage the echo because three of us are sitting in here on, on devices. Yeah. Can you hear me, Jonathan? Hello? Testing yes. one, two. Can you hear yeah. me? Yes. Uh, how do you pronounce the name of Yeshua? I would say Yahshua. Yahshua. Like, Yahshua. Like, like, like Joshua, like the book of Joshua, but in Hebrew. Exactly. 
Yahshua, not Yahusha or Yeshua. No, no, no. I, I like to see. I like to see the study on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it, you know, I've, I've seen a few, and you know, it, it's pretty. It's it's pretty cut and dry, you guys. If you go look at at Isus in the Greek, I can't see you, um, Jonathan. You disappeared. Sorry. If you go look at Isus in the Greek for Joshua, yes, in the Old Testament, it's yes, yes, in in Greek, or, or however you pronounce it, tomato, yes. tomato. That Stop word, it. that yes. word is used for Joshua. That same word is also used for Jesus in the New Testament. Yes. It doesn't make any sense to me because you don't translate people's names. Let me say that again. The only name we see in history that where you want to see a translation is somehow the name Jesus. It doesn't make any sense because, you know, what would be the translation of the president of China? There is none. You say his name. It's his proper name. You know, I wouldn't use a translation of Martin, you know, if, if you know, a Chinese person would say Martin. Right. Vice versa. Well, sometimes they call me. Make, it doesn't make any sense to me that we have this huge gymnastic backflip with this name Jesus. When, when you simply go from Hebrew to English, it's Joshua. Period. Why not Yeshua? Because that's a very common thing in Hebrew. Yeah, you're right. Yeshua is a Hebrew word that means Yah is my salvation. And it's very similar. I even, I've even, for, that's the word I, that, that I use initially um, to call, call him. It mean, virtually means the same thing. But um, I, I tried to start using Yahshua is because it's more, it's more accurate to the name that he's, I mean, if we were going to use English words here, Yahshua is what it but is. Then, it, then it's very close to Yahweh, which is also very close. I mean, very, uh, <clears throat> again, it can be a little confusing. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, well, you know, it, the thing is, he says he comes in his father's name, and I could never understand that. You know, so, well, what does that mean? And now I get it because the first, if you look at it in the Paleo Hebrew, the first letters are that, exactly the same, the, the Yah part. Is exactly the same. Well, so he does I guess, come, he does. I guess it's not different from Gog and Magog. Gog being the the, the 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 principle, and Magog meaning offsprings of Gog. Did you know that? Nope. I didn't. Yeah, I, I didn't know that in uh, studying that, and it, that's why it says Gog and Magog. In Magog meaning offsprings of Gog. So I suppose uh, you're, you, what you're putting forth is that uh, yeah, Yahshua is an um, offspring of Yeah, Absolutely, yeah. I think that's what it implies, yeah. And I think it's, he was telling us that, too, in, in, his, in his teachings. Yeah, but it's, definitely, but it's definitely not Jesus. Yeah, as if anything, they say that the origin of Jesus is more like closer to Zeus. Yes. Zeus. Yeah. It actually, you know, if you look at the historical um, entomology of it, it comes from the Jesuits and it comes from uh, the Catholic Church in, and I forget the year, but it was from, from the Vatican. Uh, the, the word, okay, so if you look at the history of the word Jesus and the word Jesuit, Jesus is only about 500 years old, but Jesuit goes back a long way, Jesuit. That's where the word Jesus comes from, Jesuit. It, it is very similar to Zeus, but it's identical to Jesuit, Jesus. Pretty much all heresies have been encouraged by the Jesuits. In part of <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You can bank on that. Brother. Not, not, not good. It, 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 Jesus is farthest from the truth, right? I mean, even the, the, you know, the earth, the, 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 the brother, everything, everything. Well, they're, they're the hitman of the Vatican. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Because we got to tell our Catholic friends the truth, Jonathan. <laughs> they can't bear it. They most can't bear it. All you do is just is just they take it personally. You can only yep. talk to those who have been coming out and opening the eyes by the power of the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, it's just an exercise in futility and they'll hate. I like yeah. what you see in the back of their cars. I believe, and they show the Eucharist with the sun ray around it. You know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's just funny. Yeah, it makes me laugh, but. You know, we have to all come come out of the paganism, but I'm in here hearing these Christian pastors preaching, 
we don't need to keep them feast days and yet they're keeping the pagan you know feast days we don't need to keep these new moons and feast uh, days and right, that. Right. but yet they're totally rooted in the paganism still and it's and it's, it's just it's just crazy it's insanity man right kevin so what happens kevin. kevin what happens is that they they uh they attack the feast days because they keep the beast days <laughs> yeah. exactly, exactly right that's a good way to put it that's a good way to put it Good job, Martin. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Yeah, that's a really good way to put it. So you can you can ask him the question. So you're telling me to not believe in the feast days so I can believe the beast days. And then you you get him thinking. Yeah, that's a good word. Very good. You do a little switcher. The idea is to like it. What? Hello. I like it. I think he was saying he likes it. I like I the it. feast days. I like it. I like it too. Bien sûr. Hello. Yeah, where's everybody? Come out of that paganism, sure. It's in everything. It's it's it's. Remember, it's been two thousand years of this, so it's sipped in every crack of society, and it's a long coming out. But the important thing is to keep moving forward and let the lamb. We follow the lamb wheresoever it goeth. Yeah. yeah. And, right Jonathan, and Jonathan, they have Yeshua's name, Yahusha's name spelled differently in the Bible codes, right? So sometimes it's Yeshua or sometimes it's Yahusha. Yeah. No, or sometimes no, no. Yahusha. I have I don't. I don't know. I thought I remember you doing Bible codes where it was pronounced. No, different. no, not pronounced no, different. But there is a there, there is another spelling with another vav, and right. I think it's only used twice in the in the scriptures where um, that name it, it has two vavs instead of one. Yeah. Um, but we, but we found both of those names in in the codes. They're both there. And I don't really understand if anybody knows why that is either, um, why there's an extra Vav in the name um, in those two occasions. Um, but it's pretty interesting. I heard someone said it's a, it's a, a more complete um, spelling. You know, it, it, um, in Judaism, and in, in, they like to truncate words. You know what I'm saying? Shorten them down. I don't know. Maybe it happened. I don't know why. Why there's two now in in those occasions where it's. But anyway, we found both encoded, so they're both there. But you know what I'm talking about? Where Yehoshua has two two bob two bobs in it. It's kind of weird looking, but it's there. And we found, by the way, we found both encoded um, in concerning um, Yeshua. Where where are you guys keeping this? Uh, fa uh, you're keeping a Passover. Where are you and uh, Rabbi and uh, Christina? Where y'all going to that? Um, we're probably going now. up. Definitely uh, not to the local dentist. That's for sure. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We're pro we're probably going up to to the um to the group up in the Panhandle up there. I think. Uh, yeah. Perry. Oh, Perry. Yeah. Well, Perry's just south of us, so it's not in the pan. Oh, it's south? I thought it was in the pan. It's, a, it's just the... north of Ocala, between Ocala and Live Oak. It's between Ocala what and Live Oak. What's, What's in the panhandle I was thinking about? Oh, that Old is that Town. Old Town's in the panhandle. Okay. Yeah. What are you planning on doing, Kevin? know what i'm gonna do i think i might do be doing something with uh chris cash because i got i don't want to cook here or do anything here so i might do it with them chris cash wait them aside they're gonna have it on the fifth so the night of fifth is the i know you said uh the fourth or the sixth but the fifth is the pass overnight for the what the orthodox jews are going to keep is the fifth the pass overnight okay We have to watch the moon, see what happens. Um, but I know a lot. I know a lot is going on. I mean, a lot is is coming down. 
Well, I, you know, usually they wait till after the Passover and then the crap hits the fan. So, you know, that's when you shoot. That's when the father says at the beginning of the year when kings go to battle. So this is a time after the Passover where we got to be ramped up in warfare and be fasting and praying. That's that's what I believe, you know, is that, you know, that's when the Bible says when kings go to battle is at the first of the year, you know, the beginning of the year. So this is the beginning of the year. So they usually pull their stuff, you know, and right after the Passover, they'd start pulling their strings and uh, doing their stuff. Um, I'm going to say something. Go ahead. Uh, you know, there is a recognition uh, in the Jewish community that Passover also is a, um, is also a beginning, beginning of the harvest season. So, um, while the main idea of the new year is incorrect, there's still a retention of that idea. Um, but uh, so, just wanted to correct that. But the importance of what is Passover and the uh, tradition that you know, Zechar Litziat Mitzrayim, this idea of the remembrance of the Exodus from Egypt. This could be very, very salvific. Yeah. Can't hear you. Hello. Jacob can hear you. Rabbi Jacob, you're muffled. Until it comes back, when he will take not just a group uh, called the Israelites, but he will take all of humanity, all who's left, you know. Into the into his kingdom, and that will be uh, that will be a not just to the promised land, but to a promised eternal uh, Eden, so to speak. So Passover is is uh, with this concept of salvation, because um, there will be people who will not be passed over. There, there will be people who, you know, will not put the blood on the doorpost, so to speak. And therefore, because they do not put the blood on the doorpost, so to speak, they... Rabbi Jacob, we're losing him on the audio completely. There are four, uh, four steps in the process of salvation and four different dimensions to that. And um, so when, as we approach Passover, uh, it should be really a time of joy because this last month of Adar uh, is a time, a season of joy. Um, and it's also a time of new beginnings of Passover is the beginning of, of uh, physical salvation, which points to the eventual spiritual and uh, uh, whole world or human salvation from the enemy. And so it's something very exciting, something to look forward to as we walk towards this period of time, understanding that whatever is happening in the world, which looks so dark, should never, as, as Jonathan says, uh, overwhelm us. Yes, it is. It seems like there's death at every every place that we look. Every camera is a is a is a part of we know is part of. We completely lost your yeah, audio. Was, was, We're completely losing your audio, of, Rabbi. No, no slave could escape Egypt. But Egypt, uh, they use not only technology, but they use the highest forms of witchcraft and in order to enslave a people, right? Uh, you could, you literally... They, 
or law just lost the money audio that's exactly what it. is going to happen again it's going to be impossible <laughs> Zecha, remember, he's going to do it again. And that's what we can rest on, that assurance, that bitachon, that hope that we spoke about last week. The many blessings of hope is that joy that we can tap into, knowing that we can rest in assured hope that, uh, that the Father under their control and the enemy can, can uh, enlist the entire world system and all the power of earthly might and yet he will be easily overcome as it's been promised so it's a remembrance we are to remember this time of the past we're to remember passover not just as something for uh, a, a specific group of people you know the chosen or israelites or our jews but for everyone uh it is the ultimate uh historical uh, marker that there is going to be salvation and an Egypt and an exodus for everyone who is follow, who are followers of Yeshua and the Father. So I uh, so wish you all a hope uh, and that glory that we, uh, just like the Israelites followed the clouds of glory through the desert and we're what we're going through the desert now some of us are really feeling like we're in no man's land in a place where it's it's dark and there are scorpions and snakes and, and wild animals and all kinds of dangers and the enemy is pursuing and we see it anybody with eyes to see can see and ears to hear can hear it and yet we're not to be overwhelmed by it and uh, because uh it happened in the past and God retrieved his people and he will do it again. Amen, King Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Jonathan, you want to close with a prayer? Uh, yeah. All right, guys. Let's uh let's close with with um well, see you. I want to see you. with prayer. Can you pray with me? Abu Yehud, we're so thankful, Father, for this day and this opportunity on Shabbat and at the beginning of the year, Father, to um, to congregate and talk about your word and talk about your feast and your name and these holy things. Father, uh, we just thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for the uh, the revelation that you bring from studying your word. Abba, we just love you for that. Father, I ask that you go with each one of them. Bring them back at the appointed time, Father. Show them your your uh, your feast. Reveal yourself in a mighty way during this time, Abba, and let them see um, the glory of uh, keeping these days and how it's important to you, Father. Keep them safe. Keep them sealed in your name and healthy, Father. If there are any that suffered, we ask that you would relieve them, that you would bring them out, that you would uh, release them from whatever it is. We ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Um, how are you guys we love you we'll uh we'll be gathering again before uh passover i'm sure and talking about this and again I'll, uh i'll be going into more depth on youtube on my channel about this so next week is wednesday right so wednesday. is that what's happening Sabbath is going to be on wednesdays are we going to know that yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. according to the calendar sabbath is going to be on wednesday but again i like i like visually seeing or, or getting some kind of um, you know, computer calculated uh, visual of that day, but as it stands, it looks like it may be Wednesday next month. So happy new moon day. Yeah, happy new moon day to you guys. Shalom. Happy shalom. 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 Shal